Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how different animals um, get rid of their nitrogenous waste as either urea, uric acid, or ammonia. And this one, we're actually going to go over a different unrelated topic as it's back to kind of plants to a degree. Um, it says define enantiostasis as the maintenance of metabolic and physiological functions in response to variations in the environment and discuss the importance to estuarine organisms in maintaining appropriate salt concentrations. So before I start, I'm going to make sure we go over this word, estuarine. I'll quickly explain what that is with another picture. So what I have up here is I've written estuary, because that's what it is. It has two parts to it. There is this part, which, so this dark blue part might be the ocean, and the light blue part might be a river, so fresh water. So ocean is salt water, and river is fresh water. Now these are, so an estuary is an area where these two meet. So these two are meeting, and this place where it meets is the estuary, right? So uh, you, the problem with that is you usually often have low tide and high tide. So you can imagine this animal here, the animal I drew in brown. It, at the moment, at low tide, it, it's in a fresh water, so it has a very non-salty environment. But once the actual high tide comes and the uh, um, ocean takes over, that same creature, if it stays there, the same animal, is now going to be in a salty ocean. So the problem, I mean, the estuary, there is a extreme of two ends. So in this case, we have a salt concentration. In low tide, it's in fresh water, which means there's almost no salt. And in high tide, there is a extremely high concentration of salt. Now, if you think about homeostasis, what would happen when this um, organism tries to deal with this problem in, in with homeostasis? We do have to balance our salt levels. So the actual animal can't have... Um, usually can't control, especially if it does homeostasis, can't survive high salt levels or too, too low salt levels. It has to have a main, maintain a balance, maintain an appropriate level of salt just for normal optimum function. So you can imagine this graph down here. We've got homeostasis written as the headline and it's a topping. And this sort of line here that you can see bits of it, that's supposed to be the ideal salt level. So this is a, the ideal salt level we want to keep. We've got on the y-axis, we've got our salt level. So up here is salt level. So the higher, the more salt, the less, the less salt. And on the other side, we've got the time. So you can imagine this red line is kind of this, this meant to be the salt levels of this creature, this creature in um, brown. So at some stage, it's normal, but then low tide hits. And when low tide hits, obviously that means we're in fresh water, so its salt levels inside might drop. But with homeostasis, there's obviously a response, right? So the actual animal would pick it up. There'd be a receptor somewhere in the body where that would pick that new uh, problem up. And there would, be, there would be a response. And that response would make sure that that level goes back up. So after the um, organism has picked up that change in soil concentration, homeostasis would make sure that that response, whatever so it might be that we um, reabsorb salt to make sure we don't lose more salt, uh, to bring that back salt level back up from too low to back to normal. So now it's back to normal. But then after a while, so after time passes, even more time passes, we have a high tide hitting, right? So we now we might have uh, the ocean taking over. So it's animals in the ocean. So what happens is obviously you have an increase in salt concentration. And that's also not good for this animal. Once I have it back at normal. So it has picked up that change, the increase in that, in that um, salt concentration. And what it does next it does response Y. So that could be it removes more salt in for the kidneys, um, and that makes sure that that salt level goes back down to that line, and then it's back to normal. Right? So if it were a, a creature, an animal that does homeostasis, this is how it would look like. During low tide, it would be a, a short drop, but then that um, that stimulus has been picked up, that change in salt concentration, the response would bring it back to normal until time passes when the high tide hits. The high tide hits. Is a, ch a brief change in concentration until the body picks it up, that change, that stimulus, and then brings, that re brings it back down for that response Y, which could be excretion of salt, back to normal. Right? And it's important to keep it at a normal level for optimum function. Now that's when, when there's homeostasis, but the actual um, question asks to define something called enantiostasis. Now creatures or animals who do enantiostasis do not actually do homeostasis. It's a different mechanism. So this is actually, you can imagine, this is what happens in an animal that does enantiostasis. 
you would have your salt levels. So right now it's normal. Then low tide hits. Which low tide means low salt levels. It's in fresh water. It's in the lake. That means your salt levels in the body is going to go down because there's no salt in the environment. And then it's only going to go back up once high tide hits, right? So it does not internally regulate its uh, salt levels. It's only going to go back up once the high tide hits. And once the high tide hits, it's back in the ocean, which means the ocean's very salty, so it's also going to become very salty. And it's going to go really high, so like really salty. And once the low tide hits, it's going to go back down again. So the environment is regulating its salt concentration. There's no internal mechanism. There's no response, extra response to Y to bring it back to that sort of ID level. And that happens in, in, in antiostasis. But the problem with that is, same with too much pH, if you have too much salt, you're going to have your enzyme going from normal. So this is normal here. So this is its kind of its normal function, like its normal state, where it can break down the substrate. So the active side, this is a substrate, and it can work. It can do this. It can break it apart. So that's all good. But the problem is if there's too much salt or too little salt, too much or too little, or too little, then what happens is your enzyme actually becomes denatured and it cannot work. So this doesn't work anymore. And obviously that's bad for metabolic function. That means you, if your enzymes in your body, if, if for an animal or for a human, if they stop working, that means the organism, the human or the animal will start dying as well. Um, so yeah, how does an animal that does an antiostasis that does not do homeostasis, how does it regulate, how does it make sure this doesn't happen? And there's actually a pretty clever way of doing it. Um, so you can look at this blue line here. This is supposed to be the pH levels. So as salt goes down, salt levels go down, the response in the in an antiostasis is actually to increase our pH levels. And uh, to as, exactly as much as our salt levels go down, it's also how much our pH levels will go up. And even though that may it might sound weird that our pH levels go up, usually that means the enzymes become denatured. But if you combine the combine the effect of too too little salt, then too like an increase in pH. It's actually good, right? So what I have here is, if you have too much salt, but you change your pH, you bring it up or bring it down depending on what you need to do, then your enzyme will work again, right? So a change in pH makes sure enzyme works again. So with enantiostasis, it deals with crazy fluctuations in salt. During low tide, it would be very low salt levels. During high tide, it would be very high salt levels. And doesn't really get rid of that salt. It's so, so all that salt, the external environment, is also its internal internal environment. But it does change its pH to make sure that everything is back to normal. Everything works really well. So that's what an antiostasis means. And that's what a creature that does an antiostasis, that's what it does. And now there's a couple different examples. The ones who do a homeostasis in this kind of environment, so in an estuary where, if, where you have two extremes, are the fish and the mammals. Um, they're called osmoregulators. Osmo refers to kind of water and salt levels. So these ones are the ones which regulate their water and salt levels. So they have the response Y and the response X, the fish and mammals. Uh, whereas the insect, the snails, and the invertebra, they're called the osmoconformers. So insects, snails, and other invertebrates, they're the osmoconformers. And these are actually animals which don't regulate their internal salt levels. They have whatever the environment has. But they do regulate, for example, if their salt levels go up or go down, the opposite happens to their pH. And those combined effects make sure that enzymes still work at a good optimum function. So the actual dot points also says, discuss why it's important for creatures living in an estuary, so in an area where you have two extremes, why they can maintain appropriate soil concentrations. Um, now for fish and mammals, they can't actually deal with too high fluctuations. So it's basically almost like, you can imagine us, we can do, we can survive in 40 degrees Celsius, we can even go down to minus five degrees Celsius. But imagine if we had fluctuations between minus 100, 100 degrees Celsius, minus 100 and plus 100 in one day. Even though we can regulate our own body temperatures, that would be too extreme. And same with these osmoregulators, so these fish and the mammals, that live there, they have to hide. When, for example, when um, the high tide comes, they hide, they, they go sh and seek shelter, or they just leave the area. They can't deal with those crazy high salt levels because their enzymes would get denatured, and their homeostasis system is not good enough to be able to cope with those high salt levels either. Right? Whereas these osmoconformers, because of those that different mechanism, you can imagine that, that um, animal here, 
So if this were, for example, a mammal, it might be here, so in that freshwater doing low tide, but as soon as high tide comes, what it's going to do is it's going to leave. So it's not going to be there anymore. It's going to go and just swim over, swim over to here and just hide whilst it's high tide. Whereas an animal that does an antiostasis, so for example, let's say a, a insect, maybe a, a snail, might be here doing low tide and the same place during high tide. Like it can stay in that environment because it has ways to deal with that uh, huge fluctuation in salt levels. Yeah, hopefully that was helpful, but that was uh, what an enantiostasis is. And the reason why, I mean, why maintaining appropriate salt concentration is important is because it does interfere with uh, osmoregulation, that's the water levels in the body, and also with enzyme function as well.